Welcome back to the Neighborhood Watch. Brought to you by All American Bail Bonds on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. In the studio with me, Deputy Kevin Duxbury. What's the story behind that song, Duxbury? Because I want our listeners to not to panic. We're still bringing Bad Boys as the theme, but that song has a little special significance I, to you. It does. I love it. Um, when I first met my wife, um, she was doing a, uh, a community garage sale where you donate things to this garage sale. She was selling them, and the proceeds were going to Katrina at the time and also to soldiers over in Iraq. Uh, for care packages and, and holsters and that type of thing. And the email that went out prior to that said they were looking for vets to come to this function. So, And I, you served in the Army. I was in the Army, right. So uh, so I went to represent, and I, I showed up on my uh, Harley-Davidson Sportster wearing my desert camis and uh, and met my wife there. So I always tell people she found me at a garage sale. But <laughs> we got to talk. Got a, little, a great deal. Yeah, we got to talk <laughs> a little bit, and and, uh, and she, she put one. I didn't remember her from high school, but apparently she remembered me. We went Where did you go? S- Saugus, Saugus High School. Oh, boy. Uh, and, she, and she did the, oh, my gosh, I remember you. She was like, I never talked to you because you were such a geek then. And <laughs> oh. I said, I said, how you like me now? Oh, <laughs> in desert camis, huh? <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. But um, and, and happy story, you guys are still together. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we have uh, <laughs> been married for six. Uh, we were dating for about four before that. So, okay. Yeah. And um, now to get back to the, to the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station outreach, although that was kind of outreach a little bit, getting yeah. to know your deputies. Um, we were talking about bike registry, bike theft, and registering your bike with the National Bike Registry. This is, I don't know if this is a fairly new tool, but I didn't know about it growing up. And just from hearing you talk about it, it sounds like it's a pretty great resource for both sides. Yeah, it's an excellent resource. The uh, National Bike Registry, and it's the same website, nationalbikeregistry.com. Um, you go to this website, and you can register your bike by the serial number. That all goes into a database. We have uh, the opportunity as law enforcement to uh, create an account with them where we just enter our username and password, and we can run those serial numbers. So when we find uh, bikes that we suspect might be stolen, um, we can run that serial number, and it'll come up with your name and address, and gotcha. uh, and that's and that's huge. Yeah, it, and I was looking at some information put out from a from a Nixel from the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station. Which, again, if you haven't signed up for it, it's a it's a media service where the sheriff station deputies can send alerts right to your inbox. Uh, go to any search engine and type in N-I-X-L-E and Santa Clarita, and it'll take you right to the LESD site for the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station, and you can sign up for these alerts. Uh, but the one that I was reading, it said 95% of the bicycles stolen in the Santa Clarita Valley don't have serial numbers on the report because they haven't been documented. So again, if you could imagine, the odds of your, your bike coming back are so much better if you have the registration, they, they know the address. And again, it's, it's something that I don't think people think about, but if we can increase uh, you know, top of mind awareness about that, register the bike. Um, and it's been around since 1984, so it's just it's an underused resource, but it but it could you know definitely make a difference. Bikes are hundreds and hundreds of dollars now, right? When well, I was riding Huffies, it wasn't a yeah. Well, they can you know, be. I mean, or you, BMX. you can you can find your uh, your bikes at Walmart that you can pick up for you know hundred two hundred. What was that look, Kyle? <laughs> what was that look? <laughs> Did you ride around with you had the pegs on the back, and then your best lady? My mom wouldn't let me have pegs. Oh, uh, she didn't know. <laughs> no, yeah. she wouldn't. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Come on, that's dangerous. I guess <laughs> more unless so for the get on the unless back you wanna, unless you want to shred on the uh, on the curb there. <laughs> well, you know I was going off jumps and stuff, so you don't tail want guys on doing your, some tail whips, guys on your pegs, or some turn downs, and yeah. all that all that you cool know, stuff. Most of my trips, I just the... I had a I had a I had a poker card in the spokes to get that bad, little. What the nineteen fifties is going on here? <laughs> most of mine and my friends' trips to the hospital started with "Hey, let's build a ramp." Oh yeah, Gosh, I, and we we see that all the time. It's just. I, I wish I knew how to build stuff, but that's probably why I'm here today. <laughs> it's because I'm just not handy at all. Um, and then, yeah, so, again, register the bikes and, and be careful. And there was other, some other crop- property crime tips um, that you had for us, um, just as far as, like, locking up your stuff and keeping it safe, right? Can we go over those a little bit? Just as oh, far sure. As, you know, um, going you know, back to the bicycles, yeah, the stuff you securing see. your bike is, is huge because, like I said, can you outrun the guy who's riding your bike away? Probably definitely not. not. And, definitely uh, not. The the <laughs> the website for the bike registry, the National Bike Registry, gave some great tips on how to secure your bike. So definitely go there. Um, and then as far as leaving possessions in your car, that's a huge one. Um, but it, advertisements it, for for thieves, right? Yeah, that's you what know, you guys just call them. don't leave high valuables on your front seat where they can be seen. If you're going to the gym or you like to leave your stuff at work or, or in the car at work or something, secure it in the trunk where it's out of view. Uh, at night when you're parking your car. 
take all your stuff inside. It's even good to use your sunscreen at night if you have one of those sunscreens that goes across the windshield. Oh, right, It okay. just makes it that much like harder to see in your car. Or... Right. Gotcha, gotcha. But the best way to protect your car, if you can do it, is keep it in the garage at night. Yeah, and lock the garage, but a lot which of a lot of people, people yeah, forget. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> can't do that because they use their garage for storage. I, I can yep. squeeze one car, maybe a new motorcycle in my garage, Kim. Oh, um, boy. But... Um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll talk more about that. And I think our, our lines are blowing up right now. So we'll, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll take a, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back on your hometown station for the Neighborhood Watch, brought to you by All American Bail Bond. And uh, just a message for Deputy Josh Dubin out there, because I know you're listening with a tear swirling down your cheek as you patrol Pitch's Detention Center. Um, Apparently, you can schedule ride-alongs online. Online, apparently. So we go to lasd.org, or would that be the Sheriff Station the site? The Sheriff Station website. Sheriff right. Station website. Um, so, and also, you can contact the Sheriff Station, in case you didn't know, through the Facebook. The Facebook. <laughs> Just type in Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station. Or um, on Twitter, at SCV Sheriff. And we also have a new tweeter in town, at Deputy Duxbury. That's D-U-X-B-U-R-Y. So if you want to follow along... And get the messages. Yeah. You're still get, you're still getting on the tweets. Be patient with me with the tweet, be patient with the twitting, with me, so. the tweetering, whatever you call <laughs> tweetering. it. Tweetering. Uh, I like yeah. tweetering. That is that is tweetering. probably by far the best. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know what? Rome wasn't built in a day. Nope. That's what they say, right? Yeah. Um, and as far as um, unfortunately, we have a <clears throat> want to transition to a more serious story uh, that was going on this week. Uh, got a lot of attention. There was a toddler. And, and especially this time of year, these things happen more and more, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, outreach we can do and awareness to hopefully, you know, stop these kinds of incidents. But a toddler was found uh, unresponsive in a pool. There were some teenagers watching a home on Monday, a Monday at the 27,600 block of Woodfield Place in Valencia. It sounded like there was a, you know, some some teenagers ages 14 to 19. There was a small child there that was being watched and the child wandered outside um, in an attempt to retrieve a ball from the pool and the child fell inside. Uh, family members later found the child unresponsive in the pool. Uh, sheriff station officials were there. Fire department officials were there. CPR was performed. But unfortunately, the child was declared um, dead at the hospital. And this is an absolute tragedy. But, you know, the only thing that we could say is that hopefully the next time this can be prevented and we can, you know, spread a little more awareness, talk about some of the things you can do, uh, pool safety. You could have a gate out by your pool if you have um, small children out there. Um it was a small. It was a three-year-old boy uh, from Southgate who died. And um, have you ever been on a call like this, Deputy Duxbury? I mean, have you ever had to deal with this kind of tragedy? Have you been called out? I've this place? had to deal with some calls re- um, resulting uh, or involving uh, babies not breathing, and uh, and the couple of ones that I did have, they weren't able to save the child. It's it's a tragedy. Um, you know, my condolences to the family, um, but. When you lose a child, it, it affects everybody, the first responders, the families. It's, it's, it's a hard one. It's a really, really hard one. They happen, the statistics show it happens um, in, in California alone um, about on average about two times a month. And um, I know that the county fire department and the sheriff station officials, they do, there, there are workshops called Drown Without a Sound, um, just kind of emphasizing how quickly this can happen and, and how quickly you know, a, a life can get lost. And so it's so important to the, if you have a pool, two things: a, you know CPR. Right. Um, so if, if if God forbid worst state, worst case scenario happens, then you can be there to you know perform the medical medical procedures necessary while um, emergency personnel are on the route. And then a, a fence. Um, there's different. I believe there's a law. Kyle, do you know about this laws in California as far as like if there's a fence? You are you are our legal expert. Now I I know actually I have a little not luckily no tragic experience with this, but my my in laws just moved to a place with a pool, uh, and from my understanding is you don't have to have a fence around it. Oh. Um, uh, maybe if you build a new house you do, but for existing houses you don't have to have a fence around it. Okay, but again something that people uh should do just because i mean we're just watching we're staying uh at my my girlfriend's house in in saugus and they have a pool and my family my two-year-old uh, niece and my six-year-old nephew are in town visiting with my my sister jade and my mom shout out and um it's it's just a constant like you know i'm, I'm trailing her around the pool i'm just constantly worried because obviously the, uh, you know kirsten and her, and her sister chill are grown up and they didn't have a you know a child safety pool around there they don't have small children so it's just a constant like just almost shadowing yeah well and i i 
I think when you are swimming at the pool or when any toddler is swimming at the pool, absolutely, you have to be out there supervising them 100% of the time. Don't even run back inside to get that soda. Um, you stay with that child the entire time and you make sure they're safe. Um, when you're not using the pool, if you are in an area where your, fen your pool isn't fenced, um, it's a good idea to have child-proof locks on any doors that access the pool. Um, don't leave any toys outside around the pool that might attract the child. Bring all those in. Um, all good tips. And, uh, and, and really, yes, just, just make sure uh, that child is supervised. I mean, it's... it's Another thing also, important. too, it, it, you don't want to get the false sense of security, but you also want to teach a child to swim. Um, just so, you know, obviously if you have a pool, the city has programs. The city of Santa Clarita, if you go to their website, they have programs that teach um, swimming, and, and, you know, they have a lot of summer programs. And coming up, it's especially important um, just because, you know, it... <sighs> You just never want to go out on that call. And, and again, it happens a couple times a year throughout the state. And I know um, in the last three years, we've had at least one case each year where this happens. And it's, um, you know, it, it doesn't always end in worst case scenario, but it's just, it is avoidable a lot of the time. Um, and, and, you know, so just, again, be careful. Drown without a sound. You might want to look that up. And because they do have um, lessons that are going on and, and fire and, tips and, and safety things and don't forget flotation devices for your kids too you know the little the little arm things and the little all the little life vests and all kinds of good stuff they make for your kid while they're swimming right i mean any anyone who can't you know it, especially at that young age i mean you just have to be super eyes <laughs> on it all yeah. the time yeah. um so wanted to mention that and we also want to talk a little bit about another nixel that you have put out um about street racing right um you're not a street racer per se. No. <laughs> but, but, uh, but you've seen uh, enough probably collisions and, and things that happen as a result of, you know, kind of street racing or unsafe, um, you know, road race behavior. And you put out the alert. We had an incident not too long ago. Um, it, it didn't start out. It, it, it didn't take place out here, but there was a crash out here. And then hours later, there was a fatal crash in the San Fernando Valley. Right. And it's, it's street racers. And you know, when you have the, the tricked out cars and you're, you know, you're competing and you're, you know, the need for speed type of thing, safety is generally not on the, <laughs> the forefront no, of the mind. No. And, and really it's just so incredibly dangerous. Uh, talk to us about, you know, what you know about that. Well, you know, yeah, I, I've been, I, I've arrested street racers myself when they, I actually was right behind two of them and they didn't see me and they took off and I ended up <laughs> taking both of them to jail and I impounded their cars for 30 days. And, oh gosh. Um, so, so I've, what, how did that, they were just like revving each other's engines and yeah, didn't and they notice just didn't that there was a I black was and white. Them and they just took off and, uh, I was surprised when I was like, I'll get one of them and I lit them up and they both pulled over. I was like, Oh, you gotta be <laughs> kidding me. So, That's what um, you call an open and shut case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, and then I've, I've had that, I've had serious accidents where, where these kids got hurt. I had the fatality yeah, where, where we've the had passenger was here. killed. So, sure. and, and, it's and we do the white ribbon thing every year. Right. And, and every year we, we have to make these reminders because, you know, especially teens, they just not always thinking about safety first. Right. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Kevin. We got to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after this on your hometown station, AM 1220, the Neighborhood Watch, brought to you by All American Bill Bonds.